Welcome back design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to make your rabbit jump and this is a pretty typical video game animation for a character so I think it's worth doing. Let's start by looking at some reference. Here we have a short jump and a long jump and a medium jump. So first we start with a short jump and then the medium jump. Now watch how he leans forward he puts his arms back, he bends at the knees, and then he puts his arms up in the air as he jumps. He's still leaning forward a little bit. And then when he lands, he puts his arms back down to his side, tries to keep his back straight, absorbs the impact with his knees, and then stands up. Now, our rabbit does not have any knees, so it's going to be difficult to do the knee bend. But we can do the leaning forward and the arm swing. And hopefully we can make it look like he lands uh, at least bent at the waist like that. So we're going to give this a try. So let's get started. Let's start by um, selecting all our controls using that uh, selection set that we created and if you don't have a selection set then you're going to have to expand all the controls and select them all and let's hold down shift and our middle mouse wheel and drag and make sure that we don't have any existing keyframes and let's right click and delete them to make sure we don't have any animation at all on our rabbit now remember each time you create a new animation you should save a new scene with a different name so you have the clean animation file that you can go back to. So I'm going to name this one Jump01. And I'm going to make sure I have Auto Key turned off. I'm going to grab that global controller and I'm going to move the rabbit over to the one side of the grid. Now if you look at our reference image, you can see that the um, jump that takes place here he starts at 6 seconds, right at 6 seconds, and it takes approximately 8 seconds, or 2 seconds for him to stand up because it goes from 6 to 8. So at 30 frames per second, that is 60 frames. And this is how long our jump cycle should take. So let's start by putting the rabbit in a, a, a relaxed pose. Make sure auto key is not turned on. Make sure snapping is not turned on on your rotate tool. And then I'm going to select all my controllers using my selection set and push S on the keyboard to set that initial frame. Now we need him to transition from this pose to his ready jump pose. So I'm going to move forward probably uh, I don't know, 20 frames and then turn on auto key and I'm going to grab the hip control and move him down a little bit and I'm going to grab his spine control, the base spine, and I'm going to rotate that forward. Then I'm also going to grab each arm Oops, sorry. And rotate each arm back a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. So he's winding up to jump here. And we're going to use something called pose to pose animation. And this jump cycle consists of probably one, two, three, four, five poses. The relaxed state, the ready jump, the in the air jump, the landing, and then the recovery. So the next phase of this would be in the air. Now before we move everything, remember what I told you about um, auto key. Some of these things don't have keyframes yet, like the legs and some of the other things. So we're going to select everything using our selection set, and we're going to hit S on the keyboard to make sure that they have 
keyframes. And what we're doing here is we're establishing what's called a hold frame between 0 and 20. So we're holding everything in place. If we don't do that, then when we move next to our next pose, everything will begin to move from 0. And uh, that's not what we want. So let's move forward to frame 40. And then we're going to start with the uh, hip controller. We're going to move that forward. And then we're going to grab the feet controllers and move them forward. And remember the arms rotate upwards. So we're going to move them. So that they're up in the air. And I think we can maybe rotate the back up just a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. And then let's move forward to frame uh, 60 or so, I guess. And oops, we've got to set that whole frame. Let's select everything using our global control, our selection set, and hit S on the keyboard to establish that hold frame. Move forward to frame 60 and establish our new pose. Let's start with the feet this time. Put them right where I want them to be. And remember the arms go back down. Maybe even face back just a little bit. Maybe give him some momentum with his head here. Try to keep his head straight. And so this is what we have so far. Let's play this and see what it looks like. Now it's not very refined. There's a lot of things going on that need to be taken care of. I mean, there's a lot of things that are not happening and need to be taken care of. We also need to add more frames so he can stand up and relax. I'm going to add 10 frames for that. And move forward 10 frames. And then we're going to, um, oops, got to make that hold frame. Don't forget that hold frame. Selection set, S. And we're going to stand him up now. Now, I think the problem with this is that it is just much too slow. It's not explosive enough. So I would need to scale these keys but you get the idea. And now we need to, in the in pose to pose animation, we need to go halfway between each pose and make sure that nothing is weird is happening in the transition from pose to pose. Like his arms wouldn't, aren't going through his head or something like that. So to refine all of this, what we would have to do is use the dope sheet and the graph editor. So to make it faster, the easiest thing to do is to use our selection set and select all controllers, open up the dope sheet, and then we're going to select all these keyframes, and we're going to go to, and I did that using this tool right here, select, and that just allows you to draw a box around everything. And we're going to go to edit scale and that allows us with the scale tool selected sorry edit scale that allows us to drag this little handle here and actually just speed everything up a little bit and it keeps the position of everything the relative position of everything together so I've now compressed this motion into less time let's close that and see what it looks like so it looks a lot better I think that helped a lot. I might try a little bit more. Much better. Also added some secondary motion to the ears if you notice.
all I did there is I went halfway between each jump and I selected both these controllers with auto key turned on and I rotated them down and then here I rotated them back like they're trailing behind him and so forth that's what I did with the ears now the other thing we need to do is make sure that this happens with some weight and some explosiveness so let's select the hip controller which is the one that drags him up and moves him up and down and let's open up the graph editor and you can see its motion here and we want to work on the translate Y and what we need to happen here is we need this to not be a deceleration when he hits the ground. It needs to be linear. It needs to be hitting the ground hard. And actually I want to break these tangents here. So that I can grab this one. And remember we need to change to the move tool and now that we have that broken we can select it and make that curve so he hits the ground kind of hard and let's do the same with this one and right click and break that tangent and then we can move it and let's see what that looks like You can see he's much, it's a much snappier animation. I still don't like the way that he is jumping because he's not moving his arms up soon enough. So that we can work on with the dope sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and dock this thing down here. You can drag it down and drop it on that blue line right there to dock it below the window so you can see it. All right, so we want him to swing his arms actually right like here. So I'm going to select this reference frame here. And I'm going to click and move it over with my middle mouse button so that his arms are moving forward sooner. And let's see what that looks like. And it's really hard because he doesn't have knees, but uh, I think that's pretty good. It illustrates the point. So that's how you would make your rabbit jump, and that's how you adjust the timing of your keyframes, the speed with scaling the keyframes, and also adding weight by adjusting the tangency or the interpolation of a keyframe like this one make it look like he's landing with weight. And when you first start animating, the two most difficult things to get are speed and weight, and then beyond that, secondary motion. But um, when we come back, I'll show you how to make a simple dance and maybe make him wave a little bit, and then we will be done. And I'll see you then.